Hello, Ben Weesey here, Director of Web Development for WSI B2B Marketing. And today, we're going to take a quick run through custom Twitter backgrounds. We're going to look at some examples and strategies behind different designs that are out there, some best practices and things you need to know before actually designing and implementing, and then physically go through implementing your own custom Twitter background. So, let's first get started and take a look at some sample designs. Before designing your Twitter background, let's first take a quick look at different designs and strategies that are out there. I suggest you do the same for whatever your market is. Take a look at your competitors and see what everybody's doing. Here's ours, WSI B2B Marketing. We have a very clean and simple Twitter background that includes sort of our logo and a watermark. Also has a quick snippet of, that clearly defines what we do couple bullet points and um, overview of our services along with our contact information. Again, very clean, very to the point. Clicking through here is an individual. Um, she's actually a graphic designer in New York and that's reflected in her design. Very unique, uh, nice use of the pink accents um, and also this nice black argyle. Another sort of trending design is using the sort of illustrative method for the background. You can see they use Illustrator um, to create some sort of vector illustration. The same goes with the Chronicles of uh, Sam where she uses a sort of a stylized comic book character of herself. And the same with Owen the Owen. Um, again, very clean, very simple, almost a 2.0 background. Another option is using abstracts, which works very well since the background can be wide and you don't exactly know how much of the background you can see based on the width of their um, browser size. Another clean example of using sort of a grungy look with some cutouts and vector illustration. Um, Chris Coyier uses a sort of photograph of himself, which is also very popular for individuals as they kind of try to position themselves as leader in the, leaders in their field. Um, the same goes for uh, Mark Nagoski, where he uses a close-up and sort of interesting crop of himself. If we get a little bit more of big corporations, we take a look at GE's digital camera division. It has a very, very clean, um, just sort of background image and actually shows their product in this case, which is really useful if you have a product-based company. Another big one, Ford, uses it to reinforce their own branding. Um, clean look, and in their case, they also include some unique selling propositions and sort of their brand positioning elements. The drive quality, drive green, drive safe, drive smart. Um, one of my favorites is Web Designer Depot, and the strategy they took is they actually matched the look of their existing website. So if you click from their website into their Twitter feed, uh, you get sort of the, the same look. They cover everything from paintings and inspiration to actually code examples and, and how to do things better on the web. And the last one is uh, Inspired Magazine, which is just daily inspiration. They post a, a wide range of things, including, on in this case, we got Free Music Monday. But they, they just use their logo to reinforce their brand. So just to recap, there's, there's sort of three big things that you want to be sure to cover. One is be unique. As we click through all these, every one of them immediately gave us an insight onto who we're following and a little bit about them. Secondly, you want to reinforce your brand or your messaging, in the case of Ford or GE, or even our, our own background. And lastly, you want to make sure that it increases your followers. Case in point, as I was doing some quick research for these, I actually followed a couple people based on their Twitter background. So now, let's get into actually designing and some things you need to know before sitting down to do it or having your designer do it. Let's take a quick look at some important widths and dimensions that we need to know before actually designing it. First, the Twitter site design. Twitter uses a fixed width centered layout. We know that the Twitter feed and their uh, followers and sort of the menu bar over here is all included in 765 pixels wide. It's also centered, so no matter what we change, our browser width to, or what, depending on our screen resolution, we know that Twitter will always be centered. 
So that gives us an idea of what we have to work with in terms of design. Secondly, we need to understand that the background is actually just the body background image attribute. And that's important so we know how wide to make our actual design. In this case, the best practices tells us to make it at least 1600 pixels wide. If you made an example, if you made it a thousand pixels wide, it will repeat. And you see that sometimes if you have a high screen resolution and you see some people's Twitter backgrounds. So, two things to know. One is it needs to be at least 1600 pixels wide. And for best practices at 1280 screen resolutions, we have about 250 pixels wide as a safe area that we can use to play with. If we take a look at some of the examples from earlier, they have the exact same setup where they use that 250 pixels wide for any of their information. If we hop into Photoshop or whatever your editing program is of choice, we can begin to set up our background. First, let's confirm our size is set up correctly. As I mentioned, it's 1600 pixels wide, and here we've chosen to do 1200 pixels since there aren't too many screen resolutions over 1200 pixels tall. That's set, and here we have some guides set up, and I've actually worked under our safe zone of 250 pixels, and I have it set up at about 235, 230. Uh, you can do that to whatever you feel is comfortable. I go under that just in case there's people out there with smaller screen resolutions, so too much of our information doesn't get covered up. A second little tip that I like to use is I have a quick screenshot of a uh, Twitter feed just so that way as I design it, I can design it with feeds in there and see what it's going to look like as a finished product whenever other people come to see our, our Twitter page. So let's quickly get some graphics together. Um, today we're doing one for a marketing PR agency out of Charleston. Um, she has kind of a teal, almost a Twitter-related color scheme on our existing site. So we're just going to do some quick backgrounds. We're going to put in a couple uh, bands of color. Um, in this case, as I mentioned, it is the background attribute. So the Twitter page and even their little triangle. I know that the Twitter logo is a transparent pink, so this will all show up behind that background. Let's add another quick one down here. Um, as I mentioned, she does a lot of networking in the Charleston area and has a very, very recognizable face in the community and for all of her clients. So let's use a picture of her face. Um, I have cleaned this up and cropped out the background. She does some marketing and PR, so we're just going to put together some stacks of papers with E. Bueno and Company, the name, quick little quip about exactly what they do, and offering communications, planning, and implementation, and then let's put a link to our, put a information on our website and then her direct phone number. All right, well now that that's done, we need to get rid of our Twitter background, our Twitter actual page. We're going to save this for web and devices. The important thing is to remember on this is that it needs to be below 800 kilobytes. We can use any file format that we want, a JPEG, GIF, PNG, any picture, just as long as it's under 800K. So let's save this to the desktop. We have it all set up, and now let's head out to Twitter and actually put it in. With our design approved and JPEG ready, we now just go out to Twitter to implement. First, log into your account. I'm already logged in and here at our home screen. First, we go into our settings. Then on the sub-menu, click Design, where we can see some of the default backgrounds and themes that Twitter has set up. What we want to do is we actually want to put in our custom one. So we quickly sim simply quick click Change Background Image, where it pops up open with the Browse button. Navigate on your computer to our file that we just saved. Click Open. And as I mentioned, it needs to be 800, under 800K, a GIF, JPEG, or PNG. Click Save Changes. And as it reloads, there is our custom Twitter background for e bueno. That's it. Thanks for listening. And for your reference, we actually have a PDF of these instructions as well as a templated PSD page available for download. Thanks. See you next time.